Over the next few videos, we'll explore uh, another approximation method for solving complex problems for which we can't solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation, and we can't apply the tools of perturbation theory that we've been developing so far. A popular example of this are helium-like atoms. So these are atoms with a nuclear charge of capital Z, nuclear charge being the charge of the nucleus, and uh, they have two orbiting electrons. Some examples of that are helium, the lithium ion, the beryllium ion, and the boron ion. So these are, for example, uh, so they have a nuclear charge of Z. If we place the nucleus at the origin of a coordinate system, uh, they have two orbiting electrons, which we'll put here, E1 and E2. Uh, these have position vectors R2 and R1, and they have uh, an inter-electron distance of R1, 2. Uh, we can write down the Hamiltonian for this type of system. This is the kinetic energy of electron one. The potential energy uh, due to the interaction between electron one and, uh, so this has charge ZE and the, the nucleus. So you get this set E squared, and there's just a Coulomb interaction. The kinetic energy of electron two and the Coulomb interaction between electron two and the nucleus that has charge set E. And we have an extra term that's due to the Coulomb interaction between both electrons that are separated by a distance R1, 2. And this is going to be the important term for us. So this is the Coulomb interaction between the orbiting electrons. If we initially choose to neglect this term and only look at uh, the electrons as being completely independent of one another, so they don't feel each other's presence at all, we can actually solve the Schrodinger equation. So this I'll denote by a star. So if we ignore this, then the solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation, which will denote by a capital Psi. It's a function of the position of electron one and the position of electron two. This is just given by the product of two wave functions. One of them being the wave function for electron one and the other one being the wave function for electron two. And these wave functions are the eigenfunctions for hydrogen-like atoms. And these are just uh, for hydrogen-like atoms. These are just hydrogen-like atoms are atoms that have a single orbiting electron and the nuclear charge of Z. So for hydrogen, they just coincide with the same wave functions that you're used to for hydrogen. If we try to extract the ground state energy of these types of systems, uh, but uh, simply from this wave function, so ignoring the Coulomb interaction between the electrons, uh, we'll put here, WC for without Coulomb interaction, you get a value of minus 108 electron volts. 
the experimentally determined, so this is, uh, this is ground state energy obtained from this initial wave function, ignoring the Coulomb interaction between electrons. For helium, so for a nuclear charge of two, uh, the experimentally determined value of the ground state energy is minus 79 electron volts. So you already, as expected, you get a huge discrepancy between the estimated ground state energy when you ignore the interaction between electrons and the actual experimentally determined one. Uh, an initial guess might be to treat this as a perturbative term and use the tools of perturbation theory. But because this is a Coulomb interaction between electrons, the scale of the contributions from this interaction is on a similar scale to those of the Coulomb interactions between each electron and the nucleus. In other words, this term is not small compared to the unperturbed Hamiltonian. So perturbation theory can't be applied to this problem. So it can be applied here because uh, this term that we've been noting by the star, so this Coulomb interaction between electrons, is of the same order as uh, what we'll temporarily call h bar h hat not, where h hat not uh, will be this. Right, so we need a different set of tools to treat this type of problem, where uh, the resulting Schrodinger equation is too complicated to solve. And we also can't apply perturbation theory because it doesn't satisfy the requirements of a perturbatively small correction. And this is where the variational method comes in. So the variational method relies on the following result. We have the Schrodinger equation for a particular system that's described by some Hamiltonian H hat. And this Hamiltonian is so complicated that we can't find a solution to this equation. If we apply, even though we can't find the solution, we know that a solution has to exist. So we'll apply a bra psi to both sides of this equation. E here is a constant, so we, it can be taken out of the bracket. And for the moment, we'll assume that the wave function is not normalized. So we'll keep this term around. This term is not necessarily equal to one. Isolating for the energy. We get the following result. The energy of our system of interest is equal to this ratio between the expectation value of the Hamiltonian and a normalization constant. And the variational method relies on the fact that uh, we can show that uh, this energy that we estimate with this ratio it's always greater than or equal to the ground state energy, the true ground state energy of our system. So here, this is ground state energy. 
and this is true uh, regardless of the wave function that we put in. It is ground state energy of the system described by a Hamiltonian. So we can choose, we're free to choose whatever psi we want and whatever energy we estimate from here will is guaranteed to be greater than or equal to the true ground state energy of the system. So the idea would then be, if we wanna estimate what this energy is, we can guess a solution to uh, the Schrodinger equation, calculate this ratio and get an estimated energy uh, for the system, for the ground state of the system. And in the next video, we'll prove uh, this claim over here, showing that regardless of the wave function we choose, this inequality is always satisfied. Uh, and then we'll also go through some practicalities of guessing the form of our wave function uh, in the following videos.